but I'm just going to do a quick unmute so we can all say hello. Hi there. Hi. 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 Welcome. Agaya, Ubuntu, and happy cross quarter. <laughs> So this is a view. Happy XQ. There you go. Is this a on video? We got the video turned off. All right. So I'm going to um, mute you all now and mute people as they're coming in. Um, but as people come in, You'll notice that there's a chat option on Zoom, so feel free to type in there if you want to say something. You can put my name in. Oh, hey, video. Hi, guys. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to go ahead and get us started as people are coming in, just to tell you a little bit about what's going on. Um, so this is a Nova Sutra's cross quarter celebration. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Michelle Merrill. Um, what I'm going to recommend is that you get yourself arranged for a meditation session. So make sure that um, you're not going to be disturbed too much, that you've got any unneeded devices muted or turned off, uh, so that you can really settle in as we do our meditation together. While we're taking care of that, I'll tell you a little bit about the Nova Sutras movement, explain a little bit about the cross quarter and our terms Agaya and Ubuntu. And then in a few minutes, we'll start in with the guided meditation. Uh, the intention is to help you get into that calm, relaxed, meditative state together. Then I'll let you know the actual time of the cross quarter, which is 15 minutes after, or 14 minutes after the hour, uh, so about nine minutes from now. And at that particular moment, we'll all really focus on reverence, loving kindness, Agaya and Ubuntu for the world. Then after the meditation, we'll have some time to talk about the Nova Sutras movement. Um, I'll ask you to keep your microphone muted until then, and at that point, we'll open it up for discussion. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, you can use the chat feature and type in a hello and let us know where you're listening from if you like. Um, and I see that we've got, oh, Mary and Joe on. That's great. Hi, and you have me as well. This is me and So let me switch to screen share here. So the Nova Sutras movement is an intention to bring together science and spirituality. We're finding ways to co-create practices, celebrating this wedding of our rational, emotional, and intuitive human existence in full recognition of the beauty and power of nature. Nova Sutra celebrates solstices, equinoxes, and cross quarters because these are planetary phenomena about the interaction of our home planet and the sun that we depend on. So this is just science. This is not uh, anything mystical or really open for any kind of dispute. But as it turns out, many religions uh, have recognized and include some celebration associated with these eight times of the year, which are sometimes called the grand octal or the seasonal cusps. So this November cross quarter is the midpoint between the September equinox and the December solstice. And today, in just a few minutes, we're going to arrive at that specific place in Earth's orbit that's directly between those two. 
at that moment, from the perspective of the Earth, the sun will be directly overhead off the coast of Chile and Peru. In the Northern Hemisphere, this is the heart of autumn. At this cross quarter point, nights are growing longer, colder. A lot of the festivals around this time focus on mortality and the interplay of life and death that can be so evident at this part of the year. Trees are losing their leaves, annual plants are dying back. It's an important time of transitions and letting go. The seasons are related to the orbit of the Earth around the sun and the way that the northern and southern hemispheres are sometimes tilted toward the sun and sometimes tilted away from the sun. In Nova Sutras, we choose these eight times of year, the solstices, the equinoxes, and these cross quarters in between, to meditate together on two fundamental concepts, Agaya and Ubuntu. We use these terms as a brief way to express fairly complex ideas. Agaya is a new term intended to express our joyous recognition of the deep sacred beauty of the universe. It's an attempt to articulate the, the awe that we feel when we recognize the wondrousness of nature, whether it's the glint in the eye of a blue jay when it's stashing an acorn, the feel of a gentle breeze on your face, the sound of crashing waves in a fierce storm. All of that is summarized in a Gaia. Ubuntu is a term borrowed from South African languages and it represents community, mutual aid, and deep interdependence. In Nova Sutras, we expand this meaning to embrace the connection between all things. Humans can't exist without the other life around us. The forests, the oceans, the grasslands and rivers that produce the air that we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat. And of course, our spirits need that inspiration and joy of a Gaia, connecting us to the beauty and wonder the amazing complexity of the living world. It helps us find our place in the universe and it's what we need to really thrive. So Agaya and Ubuntu weave us all together in this more than human world with reverence, joy, generosity, gratitude, and loving kindness. As we begin to open this call as sacred space. I'll be doing a practice calling the corners. Um, this helps us really situate ourselves and connect us to the place we're in, to the beings around us, human and otherwise, all around the world. In calling the corners, we send wishes for beings to abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu, to live lives filled with community, connection, reciprocal blessings, and loving kindness. So you can call the corners along with me. Uh, if you'd like, you can stand up and move or just sit and think, but really try to feel in the different directions, the different concentric circles as we go. Um, I'm in California, it's morning, so the sun is in the east, and that's where I'll start. Uh, Please just follow along out loud if you like, or just think and feel your way through it. May all beings to the east abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings to the south abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings to the west abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings to the north abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. May all beings above abide in a Gaia and Ubuntu. 
may all beings below abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all the great tree beings that connect above and below abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May I abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings nearby abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings in this watershed abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings in the surrounding habitat or bioregion abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings on this continent abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. May all beings belonging to Earth's beautiful, bountiful biosphere abide in Agaya and Ubuntu. Now, sit comfortably, settle in, and go ahead and close your eyes if you want. We're approaching the moment of the cross quarter, and I invite you to take a nice deep breath in, feeling your connection to the earth below you, grounding and stabilizing you. As you release your breath, feel your connection to the sky above you. Take another slow, deep breath and savor the feeling of that breath nourishing your relaxed body. Exhale gently and slowly, allowing any tension remaining to leave. As you slowly inhale, invite the sacred joy of Agaya into the center of your being. And then as you release your breath, send with it your feelings of humble gratitude and communion to spread out into the world. We're at that place in Earth's orbit that marks the cross quarter. From an earthly perspective, the sun is directly overhead where it's solar noon, over the Pacific Ocean, off the coast of South America. Try to envision how that looks and feels right now. A brilliant midday sun directly over the vast blue Pacific. If we were there together on a raft, anyone standing up would cast no shadow. Just imagine taking the warmth and shimmering radiance of that sun overhead and transforming it into loving kindness, into Ubuntu and a Gaia. Now imagine Ubuntu and Agaya shining forth through you, from your heart, out into the world. Know that you are surrounded by a community, that everyone meditating together right now is there with you, and that we are all radiating Ubuntu and Agaya. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya across the deep and sparkling immensity of the Pacific Ocean. Together, we shine Ubuntu and Agaya to every place on Earth, now touched by the light of this cross-quarter sun. Together, we shine Agaya and Ubuntu out to touch all those in the dark of night right now, all around the world. Together, we shine the light of Ubuntu and Agaya 
across the universe from our beautiful little home world. Together, we are inhaling Ubuntu and exhaling Agaya. Together, we are inhaling the joy and wonder of Agaya and exhaling connection and loving kindness through Ubuntu. Feel yourself as a connector between the air above your head and the earth beneath you. Acknowledge our allies, the trees, that make this connection between the worlds of sky and soil even more strongly. and send the trees your gratitude for showing us how to link heaven and earth together. We also thank the trees and plants, all of the living green things of this earth for providing us with the oxygen we need to breathe in. And then for taking the carbon that we release to build their own bodies. We thank them for this deep expression of loving reciprocity of Ubuntu between all beings. I invite you to fully open yourself to a Gaia, to the joy, the wonder, the awe of the profound beauty of this amazing planet we live on. Allow yourself to connect with gratitude for having this opportunity to participate in the complex dance of co-creation that we call life on earth. Now take these feelings, these experiences of Agaya and Ubuntu 
and offer them as a gift to the whole world. very gently at your own pace you can start to slowly open your eyes and return to the here and now allow yourself to come into a state of calm attention energized by your connections to a Gaia and Ubuntu through that moment of the cross quarter. Take a moment to thank yourself for sharing in this worldwide meditation. We in the Nova Sutras community, thank you for taking this step toward global wellness and awareness, toward a vision of the world abiding in a Gaia and Ubuntu. So once again, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being part of this. We're going to transition into conversation. Um, this is an important part of our practice in Nova Sutras to help us ground and connect the experiences that we're having. So to um, keep Zoom working appropriately and to keep people focused in. Um, I'll just unmute people one at a time. And if you go into the, um, I believe it's the participants window, uh, you should see that there's a way that you can raise your hand and I can unmute you. Um, uh, it looks like Paul and Bob, you're the only ones who have video on. Uh, so the other option is just to wave your hand. And if you do have a way to turn your video on, um, uh, Jerry and uh, Joe and Mary and Janet, um, if you'd like to do that now, that would be great so we can see you. Hello. <laughs> All right. All right, yeah, you also, um, you do have controls. You can can go ahead and just unmute yourself. I think we're a small enough group that we'll just have you do that. And uh, there he is. Hey, Joe. Is there anyone who wants to share something that came up for them during the meditation? Something about that experience. Well, I had a brief, uh, <clears throat> just a brief moment. It's been, a, I'm in sort of a stress struggle mode. We have a lot of stuff the last couple of days, but I did have at least a reminder of um, what's good about it. It's almost like, can I have more of that? <laughs> Please let me have more of that. Let me feel more of that. It's, uh, I, Feel like I haven't been. It seems like I know it in my mind, but it, it, it's always helpful to have someone 
guide me a little bit. Mm. And so I appreciate that. That's what I was thinking. I thought of my um, older brother, Jan, who I lost just recently because um, I was thinking about Bhutu and um, he wrote this wonderful poem. Um, he was sort of in his teens and early 20s in the 60s. Um, and he wrote this wonderful poem about the sense of being part of something larger uh, than himself that, you know, I, I often just feel so bad for people um, who are not our age, um, who don't sort of have any touchstone, you know, about a time. But anyhow, his poem ends with um, just the phrase, uh, when we were part of it all. Uh, and uh, I just found it very beautiful. But, um, and I kept picturing the islands where my dad grew up. Is there anyone else who had something come up for them that they want to talk about? Science nerd kind of thing, but Sorry, Joe, you, you were still muted. Can you try again? Oh. I've got you now. Okay. Well, I, uh, spend a lot of time thinking about and visualizing the relationships between the earth and the sun. And um, this is just kind of a science nerd note. Mm. <laughs> um, the, uh, on the solstices, uh, the earth's axis is um, in a plane that includes the sun, whereas on the uh, equinoxes, it's in a plane that runs at right angles to the line from the earth to the sun. And so at the cross quarter day, uh, I hadn't really, uh, I've thought about cross quarter days a lot, but I uh, hadn't really thought until now that, okay, uh, it's a 45 degree angle um, in that, uh, anyway, I'd have to draw you a picture. I have to draw myself yeah. a picture. I haven't, still haven't finished visualizing it all, but uh, there's this 45 degree angle. So anyway. Okay. For what it's worth, that's, yeah, and, and we find in, um, you know, archaeological sites all over the world, not only have the, the solstices and equinoxes been marked in a way that can be tracked in terms of, you know, stones are set so they either cast a shadow or a light passes through them um, at, at, usually at dawn or dusk on the, um, you know, sunrise, sunset on the equinoxes and solstices, but also often on the cross quarters. Um, so that was a, you know, again, without knowing what the Earth's orbit looked like, that people were working that out thousands of years ago and recognized the importance of it. Um, so it's, you know, it, it, again gives us this thing that's that's truly global that everyone can experience may i say something yes please yeah um, hi this is janet i'm in california and this is my uh first connection with your group and um i <clears throat> I think this is an incredibly important moment to uh, to recognize and to um, deepen the connection that we have with one another and with the natural world. That we are in a we're we're in a place right now, a place in time, where um, the 
consciousness of our interrelatedness is is so important it is it is it is being born uh in so many people and that um the birth struggle is very intense and and but this is this is a this is something that that is um it's a part of our evolution as as a species and as a world and that's that's why i joined this this meditation this morning because um i want to participate in in this um this birth struggle because this is you know this is what is going to um it's 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 what is going to make our world livable or make our world possible going forward so thank you for this thank you for for the meditation and the insights and the community oh, thank you janet it's wonderful to have you here with us And um, Jerry, did you have anything you wanted to talk about? Oh, okay. So I just want to reflect back, um, uh, Bob and Paul, both of what you said really addressed one of the main reasons that I was pulling this together and, and Janet, what you talked about um, is, a, is another shape of this as well, another piece of it. And that is um, we're going through times when stress and grief are probably going to just keep growing for a while. Um, the, the trajectory of what's happening with the climate crisis and other environmental crises is scary to look at. And um, having a practice together in a community that understands that is going to be part of what will help, help us all be stronger and more effective uh, in, in dealing with that, recognizing the changes that need to be made and making it through um, the rough weather. I've been thinking uh, a lot about American history and how in so many ways, sort of our original sin in this country uh, is a denial, a kind of radical denial of interdependence. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, in its sort of most cartoonish uh, extreme form, you, you see in our corporations um, and in sort of in the Republican Party, I think, but uh, this, this, kind of like the Greek definition of an idiot, you know, just not being aware of, of being in a shared space, um, you know, and not being conscious of the interdependence of all life. And I think sometimes we underestimate that and the role of that in climate denial, that, you know, there's a kind of, way that we were hardened against it um and i i just i love nova sutra so much and i'm so grateful for it every single time we have a any kind of event it just i'm aware of my own um need for it so It only seems to help me. <laughs> yeah, I realized then I, how much help I really need. Well, I, we all do. That's, that's, um, yeah. you know, 
that is the human condition. And, um, and we are this profoundly interdependent species. It's one of the things that makes us um, distinctive is uh, how, how good we are at tuning into one another and learning from one another and how poorly we do when we don't have access to that in a healthy way. Yeah. That's really true. I, I was thinking about uh, the gentleman who spoke about his Midwest roots, about how this was all wonderful, what we were talking about with uh, the drawdown, but that trying to talk to his relatives, he said they're just, they're not having it at all. Yeah. When they get to it. Rather than be overly judgmental, I guess, it's just that it, it's still frustrating to me that this divide is just, it seems pretty artificial in a way. And that's a whole part of this whole, you know, um, self-reliance and this and that, and a lot of things that get distorted and really misunderstood. And now we're kind of a critical situation with that. Uh, how far do we let ourselves go with that? And what does it take? It's hard for people. I mean, it's hard for me sometimes too, but I, I think it's easier for me than many maybe to join with other people. I think it's a big, big, big challenge in this country for a lot of people. And isolation is a big part of it. And, uh, but I certainly think about that quite a bit. And how do we bridge, how do we start to bridge that if we can? How do we start to bridge that? So, uh, the, my, our meeting last night with the drawdown people was, uh, something I was thinking about a lot, so. <laughs> I don't have a good ending for that. <laughs> well, that's great that you're, that you're meeting, that you have a, a drawdown group. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's something, um, something where we just did a, introduction piece and and then the intention is that we'll probably start up a um, ongoing sessions in january um, to really dig into some of that but um, we're fortunate here in santa cruz that we have a lot of a lot of different paths into getting engaged with the climate crisis um, so this is just adding you know adding one more one more creek going into this big river of change. Um, we hope. That's it's great. wonderful. It's we are here on the west coast. We're, we're very much in a bubble, and you realize that when you go elsewhere. Um, and and dialogue with folks who are like totally, you know, they they just have not processed yeah. what is actually going on and um that is that is such a it's it's such a huge challenge i don't think it will be oh i don't think we'll we our lifetime will see that much of a um of a significant change but it's it is the work of you know of our time And I'm, you know, I speak as a, as a 24-7 climate activist. It's kind of like, you know. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say there's, a, uh, there's this great Mother Teresa um, uh, list of stuff. It's like, you know, people may put you down, uh, love them anyway. It's kind of like, you know. This people people may not get it, but you got to do it anyway. Yeah. yeah. One thing that that is a a source of hope, and I think is something that I'm I'm hoping that Nova Sutras can help to facilitate is there's the you know we can talk about our our left coast bubble of people who get it, um, but then the U.S. is kind of a strange bubble of people who don't get it. And globally, we're the minority. 
Right. Yeah. Very much, you know, there are billions of people in the world who get it. And here there's this yeah. hundred million or so who are resisting it. But by and large, people get it. Um, the world gets it. So, yeah, there are some resistors that we're going to have to uh, work around because they have a lot of power right now. But we have the numbers. And we have the youth. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. There are little, little gems um, in our history. There's a letter by Benjamin Franklin where he's talking about the Iroquois. Um, and he's recognizing in them both a civility that he does not see in Anglo-Europeans, <laughs> um, their ability to listen to each other in council, mm -hmm. uh, not to interrupt or have crosstalk, you know, and he talks about parliament and how savage it would seem uh, to the Iroquois. But uh, there's a moment in it where he's talking about how effortless it seems to be for the Iroquois uh, to find what they need in, in the natural world without treading on it uh, too much. Um, and you can tell he's sort of like right on the verge of seeing something that Anglo-Europeans just desperately need uh, to, to learn. Um, and he, he can't quite get there, but it's very poignant. Um, and I, I, you know, I think we need touchstones like that. We kind of need um, to go back a little bit in America through our past and try to unmake mentally some of those uh, lamentable choices. Uh, Hannah Arendt says that it's, America has like a developmental delay because there was this huge expanse of what to the colonists looked like, you know, untouched land, yeah. nobody home, uh, um, that uh, it was easier for Americans to sort of deny interdependence, to imagine that, oh no, we can just all have our own, you know, our own slice of this endless vista of, of potential, but uh, you know, I think we're at the point now where we're we're sort of joining the gang um, because it doesn't seem abundant anymore um, in the way that it did. But, uh, anyhow, so. Another question we can think about at this time of year, um, for those of us, you know, in the Northern Hemisphere, this is, this is fall, uh, depending on where you are, the, the leaves are dropping from the trees or just have dropped from the trees. And that's a, a metaphor that we can think about in our own lives. What are the things that you're ready to let go of? so that you can weather the storms that are coming, so that you can live a life more in connection with the Gaia and the Ubuntu. What can you release now? I didn't know these questions were gonna be so hard. <laughs> And I'm not expecting anyone to have answers. I'm not sure I do. <laughs> My sister just moved into co-housing. Oh, and right. That's a good I just want to say um, going there is like a mental uh, health day uh, mm -hmm. because that community, you know, they're all people who craved that. Yeah. Um, sense in their daily life of being part of something larger. Um, so, you know, the landscaping, the gardens, everything about the way they're 
community, it's, it's existed now for about 30 years, is laid out, um, is a reminder of what an affirmative thing interdependence uh, can be. You know, all the different parts of us that, you know, really can't be fulfilled except uh, by experiencing interdependence. Um, yeah, I sometimes think that people struggle, Americans struggle with, uh, well, we have to do the things that we have to do. Uh, I think in the same breath, those same people, a lot of them would just love to be able to open their hands and drop a great deal of that stuff. That's just a burden. Well, we have to do this. For instance, me driving. That, that's something we both appreciate me not doing anymore, I'm sure, because uh, it's such a high stress situation. <laughs> I definitely just leave that aside. I'm ready for nice green mass transit that takes us comfortably somewhere. When I first was in Santa Cruz in 1973, uh, my recollection, and maybe it's just my memory's bad, but you used to be able to find a bus and go kind of anywhere in the county, and that kept getting whittled down as the... Uh, <clears throat> And uh, and now what I see in this town is just the the immensity of to me the, before when I was first here you just felt like there are mountains and forests and they come right down to the sea and there are the beaches and yeah there's some people driving around a little bit but mostly there there was at least a sense of this is like a village a community here it was retirement it was vacation so but now it's like really it's a smaller version of the big log jam up in the Santa Clara and East Bay and in Sacramento, places that used to be a lot more open. So a lot of that stuff, I'm sure people are at, standing in line at a store. People are ready to <laughs> to give up being the 50th person in a, the ex express line going halfway down an aisle. I'm sure there's a lot of things people would would find a little exciting just to have to not have to do that. Find an easier way working together so we don't we get rid of some of these big dumb institutions that are working against us. So I, I think there's a, there's a way oh, somebody's phone, that a lot of people are ready for. Mm. I think a lot of the younger people can already kind of see it. And a lot of uh, us older folks are, it almost, almost seems too much to hope for, but it, it, I, I feel personally like I'm, I can sort of see the breaking point where we have to just say, okay, we can't keep doing that. We just cannot keep doing that. Everything's telling us the same message. You're just not supposed to live this way. You don't have to live this way. You have to think with each other about what can we do? How can we agree to live together that's better? Just step by step. That's all any of us can do each day, just step by step. What can we do that's better? So. I'm I'm cautiously optimistic that, that that's I'll I'll see that even even with my brothers and sisters in the Midwest I still I'm very tempted to think that there's some change happens that's why it's change people aren't quite looking at expecting to see it it just it happens sort of unexpectedly I think in little leaps and bounds that you're not quite you can't quite fit into statistics they just when somebody has a good idea or something spreads people see it and it inspires ideas, but it's a kind of a very irregular process. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we're at the beginning of a, of something that's really is going to be a change. People will be happy to receive. Just my observation. There's a phrase that comes to mind when you were talking about, you know, all of the, all of the crowding and how it feels like, you know, there's these institutions just keep driving us a little yeah. crazier every day. Um, and that, that phrase is peak complexity. Mm. And the notion is we've kind of hit the limits of what human cognition can handle in a healthy way. Um, and that it's, it's not only just the numbers of people that we end up seeing or interacting with, but all of these various things that we feel like we're socially expected to engage with and keep track of and be able to handle. And um, 
it's a bit much for us. And I think that's adding to the levels of stress and anxiety and depression because so many people are even, you know, even if the environment were perfectly healthy and we didn't have to worry about the climate, it's more than we can handle just the overwhelm of the complexity of normal life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. If you sort of entertain the idea that everything happens for a reason, there is this way I think you can see something positive happening in response to sort of four decades of downward mobility. Um, for 80% of our working people, you know, wages have lagged badly behind the costs of housing and healthcare and tuition for decades. So the the sort of nuclear family the I, the self sufficient household um, <laughs> is becoming more and more untenable and you can see like you know in the embrace of tiny houses um you can certainly see in co-housing but i think you can see more and more you know that people are sort of maybe some people at least on the verge of saying oh okay yeah uh, we can't have these little self-sufficient, uh, you know, households, uh, but but we can um, do something that is not uh, so unnatural, mm. you know, and find ways of sharing living costs uh, and sort of the labor of of sustaining life mm. with other people. You know, even if we can't afford to move into co-housing communities, we can still have, uh, you know, common meals with people a few times a week. We don't have to live in a, in a co-housing complex. But I think, you know, some of that, that is true, um, that people can feel their attraction to nature and their attraction to each other, kind of finding a an avenue out um, through that financial insufficiency uh, that is at the highest level since the 1920s. I don't know if that made sense at all. Okay, so um, we're getting toward the end of the hour here. I uh, wanted to do uh, just a couple of brief announcements and then we'll go ahead and close out. Um, so first of all, uh, these, these octal meditations, the next one of course is going to be the December solstice. Um, that's, uh, well, it sounds like everybody's specific time. So that'll be uh, 8, 19 PM on Saturday, December 21st is the the solstice moment when the sun is over the tropic of capricorn um so we'll do another session like this probably via zoom uh from 8 to 9 p.m on saturday the 21st uh, pacific time um for those of you in the santa cruz area hoping that we can arrange at least one more in-person celebration sometime between now and then. Um, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's ever going to rain, so we can probably go ahead and do it outside. <laughs> um, I hope true. that that's not wrong. Maybe what we need to do is some sort of rain dance. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, that would be. Yeah, so, so let's, uh, Think about that. If you haven't done it already, there's a there's a survey via the Nova Sutra Santa Cruz website, and you can uh, let let us know times and dates that usually work for you, and we'll try and schedule that up and figure something out. Um, Is it okay to invite people to that? Absolutely, uh, yeah, yeah. Because I was thinking I should have invited people to the Zoom call, maybe. Uh, you know. I know so many people who would love uh, what you do, and um, I, I will start uh, recruiting. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Um, this is definitely a more the merrier situation. So, 
um, yeah, and that's that's something that um, any of you, if you if you feel that you have people in your social network that would connect with and benefit from uh, this kind of uh, interaction, either just the online pieces or um, getting together in a local community. And those of you who aren't in Santa Cruz, you can always contact me and I'll help talk you through, set up whatever, uh, possibly even come out to you if, if that's gonna be helpful. Um, because I think it's really important to kind of keep it rolling. Joe. I have to jump off now. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for being here. See you later. Bye, <laughs> Janet. Yeah, nice to meet you. Bye. Great to meet you all. You too. 15 seconds worth of announcements. Not sure they would have been relevant. I don't know where in California she is. I don't think it's Santa Cruz. But anyway, uh, tonight, so. Thursday, uh, movie at Cabrillo College, Erica Schilling Forum. It's about fracking. It's shot by a local filmmaker named Hope somebody she's a friend of mine don't oh, remember four piece yes <laughs> her email address but anyway 6 30 to 8 30 in the erica schilling forum room 450 and tomorrow night uh mary floating is having her big uh launch party of her, her book fruit of the devil at the india o old india joe's site it's now called the food lounge 1001 center street 5 to 8 p.m there'll be some nice music and art by a friend of ours uh, and Mary will read from the book and just drop in any time between five and eight um, yeah and, uh, it's uh, yeah go to fruit of the devil dot net fruit of the devil dot net <laughs> yeah, I'll be there for sure all right we'll see y'all hopefully <coughs> excuse me thanks for doing this Michelle yes well, thank you to everyone for, for being on the call. Um, I've got everyone unmuted. So I um, just want to wish you well in the, uh, this next trip around the sun and yeah. hope to see you on the solstice, if not sooner. And a happy second half of the fall in the Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Love okay. you guys. Bye-bye. Ubuntu and Agaya to all. Ubuntu and Agaya. Oh, thank you. Yay. All right. <laughs>